Hi, everybody. I'm Audrey Moore with Audrey Helps Actors, and this is episode number 22, Actor Tax, Actor Taxes, get some money, Actor Taxes, do not owe, get some cash from the government, Actor Taxes. We have uh, some really great guests on today, Ronnie Stedman and Daphne Bloomer McVeigh, who are both uh, actor tax preparers, and they are with a place called Chuck Sloan Associates, which handles all of the actor tax stuff. That's sort of their specialty, so if you're looking for an actor accountant tax preparer, this is your place that I recommend. It's on the Audrey Helps Actors recommendations page website so Ronnie Stedman if you listen to this and you are so excited to contact him he specializes in personal and also corporate taxes you can contact him at Stedman s-t-e-a-d-m-a-n tax services at gmail.com that's Stedman tax services at gmail.com and Daphne, you can contact her at Daphne Bloomer, D A P H N E B L O O M E R, at yahoo.com. I'm going to repeat that at the end of the episode just so you guys can have it. They're both working actors and also tax repairers. And I don't just mean like they do some jobs now and then, they have lots of credits, they have been around for a while, they are high booking, auditioning, working actors, so they really understand where you're coming from in this scenario. So I couldn't recommend them higher. And just a reminder, I don't get any kickbacks for this. I'm just a fan. I'm just a fan, and I just want you guys to be helped out. A couple of things we want to address real quick before we get into the episode. People have been asking me about how do I get pilot scripts. You want to read them. I've suggested reading them. There are a couple things you can do. One thing you can do is you can just ask your reps for some pilots if they're getting them. And as they get them, you can say, as you get a pilot script, can you just email it over to me? Should be something that's easy for them to do. Another thing that you can do is look at things called tracking boards. Now, just so you know, a tracking board is something that writer's assistants or network assistants They put it up on the internet and it's sort of like this secret underground script sharing sort of website service thing. They go up and they go down, meaning they pop up and then they close it down because the network world doesn't want the real world to have access to these pilots because they change. And I can tell you as a person who reads pilots every year and then sees the show as it is aired, it's often uh, gravely disappointing (laughs) once you've read the pilot and then see what they did to it because your expectations are A, and even if it's a good show and they change it to C, you're sort of, you know, a little frustrated because you wanted to see the pilot that you read. So they don't want people to have it. So that's why you sort of have to be like a stealth ninja looking for tracking boards online. How you do that, I leave that up to your own devices. I cannot share that with you guys because these tracking boards are sort of secret ninja endeavor services. So good luck to you on your own search. If I can do it, I know you can too. Also another note about the tax bill. We get into it, but just to clarify for you up front, The tax bill does not affect your 2017 taxes that you are filing this year in 2018. It does affect your 2018 taxes that you are filing in 2019. So if you have never used an actor tax preparer to work with your actor taxes and you're not sure if you should go corporation or not for this year that you're going to be filing next year, then now is the time to be having those conversations and getting somebody to help you with your taxes at this point now to see what you should do in the future year. Something regarding 1099s, we talk a lot about something called 1099s. 1099s is income. It's a lot of things like anything non-union. Those of you who are still non-union, that's all 1099 income. It basically just means that you are paying all the sort of taxes and also Social Security and Medicare and all that. The company does not do it for you. So when you have a W-2 
two, that is taxed income. And when you have a 1099, that is non-taxed income. So even if you are a person who this next year decides that you're not going to go corporate, you need to make sure that you are still holding all of your receipts because you don't know if you're going to get 1099 income until the year is over. 1099 income is not just for non-union. It just pops up and you just keep all of your itemized deductions because you can still do itemized deductions on 1099 income for your 2018 taxes that you'll be filing 2019, but you cannot do it for any of your W-2 income. But keep all those receipts, you guys. That was a lot. There's two more things. I got a really great little message on Facebook from a listener, David Beal. Hey, guy, what's up, man? And he was in marketing for a long time, and he really talked about working the level you're at. I'm getting so many emails about people just not really sure what they're supposed to do. And he said, you know, you work the level that you're at, and that is so the best way to put it. So... When you're thinking about where you are versus where you want to be and it just kills you to think that you're just going to have to put in energy over time to build relationships, that really is the fun part. And I just recommend you to be excited to work the level that you're at. And what that means is the people, the writers, the filmmakers, the people who are interested in costumes, in styling. My stylist, I met in acting class several years ago. And we have maintained a professional and personal relationship. And now we're collaborating together on our style. My manager, as you heard, she was a friend of mine before she was ever a manager. And then we've had a really powerful professional relationship over the last several years. And that's just an example of working the level that you're at. Also, just a heads up, there's no editing this week. We wanted to get this podcast out to you as quickly as possible. Luckily, these two guests are not only highly entertaining, but they're also extremely informed and qualified to discuss taxes. And we have a great episode coming for you. I think we answered all of your questions. If you have more questions, just go to the website. We're going to have their emails out for you. And also just know we can't give specific answers. Everyone's like, what is the cutoff line for when you need to go corporate And there really isn't such a thing anymore. So if that's something that you're wanting to know, really the best thing for you to do is to contact one of these accountants and put in a little word and see if you can make an appointment and just get some information. All right, you guys, invest in your business. Your finances are part of your business. Know your money. Good luck. I love this episode. I hope you're on your way to an audition. Audrey helps actors because they don't know anything. Hi, everybody. I'm Audrey Moore with Audrey Helps Actors. And today we have... Daphne McVeigh. And Ronnie Stedman. And we are here to talk about actor taxes. Woo! Very sexy, yeah. Ronnie Stedman. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) So you both are tax preparers and a something agent a an enrolled agent an enrolled agent he'll explain what that is over at chuck sloan and associates yes Yes. and that is a accounting agency a tax servant what it's a tax Tax preparation office great sherman oaks wonderful and that is generally i have it up on the audrey helps actors recommendations page on my website for anyone looking for actor taxes you guys are really i think the go-to as far as i know for actor tax preparation and whenever anyone asks me I need somebody to handle my taxes. It does actors. I send them to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. (laughs) (laughs) So we have a list of questions today, and we're going to get into it. I know everyone is really in panic about the new tax bill, so we're really glad timing-wise that we have this happening today so that we can go through all of that. Uh, Daphne, you cover personal taxes. Yes. And you, Ronnie, handle corporate taxes. Right. And personal. And personal. He does both. Yeah. He does both. And so we're going to talk about the pros and cons in each level, particularly considering the new tax bill. I have questions that were emailed to me, and we're going to just sort of roll right through. Okay? Cool. Oh, I also want to say, very importantly, that you are both actors. Yes. Yes, we are. And that's what I love so much about Chuck Sloan. There's a handful of really... 
act, working actors who also are preparing your taxes. And if I could just say, who's better to prepare your actor taxes than another actor? Exactly. Right? Yes. I think then it's, so. then it's taxes with personality. Yes. Then you get entertaining. <laughs> it's an entertaining, per, it's an entertaining appointment. <laughs> it's not your average accountant. Uh, Except for the one situation. drama actor. People come in and they go, yeah, yeah. like crying while preparing. I wasn't expecting to have fun I when know. I got my taxes yeah. done. Yeah. Right, this yeah. is actually not as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> like, well, I'm so cute. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so our first question is, can you give me the name? Oh, that's that was not. Lies. That was a that was a question to Daphne earlier. Okay, does an actor <laughs> does an actor need an actor accountant? Does an actor need an actor accountant? Oh, I thought you were saying an account. Okay. No, okay. an okay. actor like, tax like a, a checking account. No, or no, a no, savings account separate right. yes. from. So I'm gonna so. for for them and their understanding. I'll say an accountant, but we just want to clarify: an accountant is not what you recognize yourselves as. An accountant is like who my mom is. She works for a company. She handles like payroll, things like that. Right, You're yeah. tax preparers, right? Tax in this. Like, I also am an accountant too, but you are. in the in what we're talking about here, and and actually we'll get into that. Later, right. I can yeah. tell you some more of that stuff okay, later great. with the corp stuff. And so, what's so should an actor have somebody handling their taxes who specifically is specialized in actors or show business people? Yes, if you're going to have your taxes done by someone, you should mm-hmm. definitely have someone who uh, who specializes in it because it's there's a there's a lot of little ins and outs and tricks and things that. Um, that you might get at another place, mm-hmm. that, at a um, at an HR block or a CPA firm or whatever, but um, because they're very usually they're very capable. Uh, but there's also it's it's good to have someone in the in the industry in the industry, yeah, yeah. But then an H and R block is also going to charge you per form, which can um, increase your expense with them versus at Chelsea. true, and it's also a bit of a crapshoot at a place like that because you, you might get someone great, you might not. Yeah, I definitely can say that uh, what I try to encourage people in this podcast to to do is to consider themselves building a team and building yeah. their team at an at as early a place as they can start to build that team. And the sooner you have an accountant who knows where you are, what you're doing, what your you know, f- actors incomes fluctuate. Many of you are newer actors, some of you are very seasoned listeners, and you'll and those of you who are seasoned know that it goes up and down and round and round. And an H and R block person or somebody at one of those places is maybe not going to be someone who's like permanently somebody who may be on your team for a while. Right. 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 And I would say, I mean, in all honesty, it depends on where you are in your Great career in a way too because I feel like if you are someone who's done like who's got one acting W2 and yes. most of your income is coming from another area and you don't mm-hmm. have a whole lot of acting expenses mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. I don't know mm-hmm. you know it, it's kind of I don't think you can I'm not an all or nothing person like sure. everyone should do this or yes. everyone should do that yes I recommend even if you're just starting out and you're waiting tables, it's it's good for the actor to be thinking professionally forward, I think, as often as possible. And if you are with an actor account, even though maybe you don't have, you know, actor income that's in a W-2 form yet, I think it can be good for you to start getting familiar with the environment and getting ahead of what you need to be looking forward to when you do book that job where suddenly you make 40 grand on some commercial and then you're in a different tax bracket this year and then all of your money is gone because you spent it and you owe like eight grand in taxes this year exactly and and also too you know um there's a you you do want to understand the business side of our career yes and i think a lot of people are creatively invested yes you know they're all about the process and taking Mm -hmm. classes and Mm -hmm. you know tapping into their creative animal Mm -hmm. but they don't understand the business side of it yes which taxes is part of that we talk about that on this podcast at length i'm always trying to encourage them to be business minded and understand that you are running your own business and a business person should have a solid person running the financial side of their business and somebody who is familiar with the with the specifics of your business is what you would want running your finances. 
So, no brainer from you guys. But nah. I just wanted to sort of <laughs> point that yes. out. We so agree. That, I concur. I agree. <laughs> yeah. I, agree. I just I want agree. to sort of for the actors of all levels to understand yeah. why it is that I'm such a fan of actors having uh, actor accountants and actor uh, tax preparers handle their finances. So we have a new. Oh, let's start with this ballpark range. How much can somebody say maybe a newbie coming in who's maybe got a W-2 who's doing their actor tax accountant to somebody who is incorporated on a series? Like what is a ballpark range that they can expect if they're going to come into Chuck's Loan and have somebody pay to prepare their taxes? What is the cost that that looks like? Well, I'll speak on. Well, so for our rates are a flat rate okay depending on the month that you come in i see so if you come in january february it's one rate if you come in you know beginning of march it's a different rate than the end of march april you know where when tax it's deadline panicky, is yeah it's right. like it's so it's like a tiered rate i see and it's a flat fee based on a certain structure of time great so if you come in and you've got your ducks in a row yes. and you're able to get in and out within your appointment time yes then you play you pay that flat fee and you're good great so it's, if you've done your tax preparing work meaning you've counted your receipts you've done all that sort of stuff yeah. then you're just really paying for that appointment and some consultation we have a packet that you download online Great. you fill it out and this is important too for this because everyone's so ahead of themselves yes. as far as for next year yes that they're not realizing you still need to prepare for your 2017 taxes yes right now we're definitely going to get and, into that being a different thing than this year for right sure. and so i think sometimes you know we're putting the cart before the horse of kind course. of thing like let's wait finish actors this. do that <laughs> <laughs> yes no. um so it's a it's a flat rate when right. you come in so there's not a perform rate um right. and it is dependent on the month great so it, 210 they... to 250 for a personal return great um and if you go over then you get you have some overtime charges that could stack up on top of that great and so i just want to explain to actors because i know they they when i started working with my tax preparer they would think that I basically like came in with like a pile of all the receipts and then they did all the work for me. And then I sort of like showed up and was like, hey, can I get a check? But that's not right. what occurs. No. no. No, you're paying us for our tax prepare, our tax prepare knowledge and right. not to call through your receipts and mm -hmm. your stuff like that because you don't want to pay us for that because it's, it's, it's silly. It will cost too much money. Right. And that's right. the stuff you can do yourself. <laughs> Bless Sorry. you. And I also want to encourage you guys. I know that going through your receipts and all that sounds like a lot of hell. And it's not something that most people look forward to. You do get better at having that system. And I will say for, oh, bless her. I'm sorry. No, please, girl. You're just allergic to greatness. That's I what's am. happening. I am. I'm like, is there a cat here? No, there's yeah. not. <laughs> so, uh, and part of what I really I'm like about going through my receipts and handling my taxes at the end of the year, for me personally, just so you guys can have sort of like a, maybe a like, I know this is going to sound really nerdy, but like a <laughs> hippie sort of understanding of your taxes. I really like seeing where my money went this year and what yeah. were my priorities. And there have been many years where I thought, well, I am just not getting out enough. Like legitimately, like, yeah. Andre, you're having no fun. <laughs> and then I go and see that, oh, I haven't spent any money on, on clothes this year. And that's a part of my job. And so I need to this year go spend a little bit money on reinvesting in maybe some audition attire or things like that. And it really starts to put my year into perspective as sort of like, a, I don't know, like a spiritual graph, right? Yeah. Like, where are your priorities? Yeah. Right? So I want to talk about, hold on. hold on, you guys, let's get up the list. We're going to talk about the new. Oh, and, yeah, and oh, for uh, the we didn't answer okay, the corporate. Um, for the on the corporation side of things, the uh, flat rate is five hundred dollars for great. corporate return. Uh huh. Um, and then uh, unless it's an LLC, so right. sometimes people be LLCs. We'll get into that I'm yes. sure later too. Sometimes but then, people uh, be LLCs. Sometimes people be LLCs. <laughs> they, they get into the LLC rap uh, game. And that <laughs> is that's just two hundred and fifty dollars on over whatever the the personal rate is I so see. if it's if so if you come in february it's 210 plus 250 i see um because an llc return is actually done with the personal return great so. perfect let's talk about the new tax bill you guys yeah so let's first clarify that the new tax bill is not for your taxes that you're filing for 2017 
but will be the taxes you're filing for 2018 in 2019. Correct. Exactly. Great. So no panicking right now. Right. You have the year to get your ducks in a row for whatever you want to do for 2019. Sort of. Sort of. In a way. Ish. You got to do some preparation now, though. Well, that's, yes, that's if why we're doing gonna, the episode yeah, now. You, yeah, right? right. We're doing it in January and not July. Right, exactly. Right, exactly. So hopefully you're exactly. getting prepared. So let's talk about the new tax bill. How is it different from the previous tax laws and how that affects the actor? Go for it. It is a sea change in how it affects the actor. Because initially, the the way it's always been done um, is that act because of the because of the uh, the unions have gotten us paid as 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 W two employees mm-hmm. when we really are running businesses. That's true, like you say. Mm-hmm. Um, we it, but but it it creates an awkward situation with with the way the taxes are uh, with the way you fill out your tax form because you're paid as an employee but you take expenses. Mm-hmm on the what's called the 2106 which is unreimbursed job expenses or right. job search expenses so this can be things such as such as your agent fees and your manager fees right. and your mileage and your the mileage on your car you know that you put in for business your your, your cell phone your usage your at, like all of your deductions our business Office expenses supplies. they're they're business expenses but they go they've historically gone on as unreimbursed job expenses so right. like as if you were employed Right. Um, that's what's changed is mm-hmm. that they, well, well, that that's how it was done before. Right. And it was awkward, like say it's an awkward thing because you typically, when you take a job, you don't have high expenses, but right. uh, actors have really high expenses because it's really yes. most of the, th- most of the time your job searching. Yes. You're, you know, you go to 50 Seeking auditions jobs. to get one. Right. And you go to 50 commercial auditions, you get, you go work for a day. Right. And you're hoping you make some money on that commercial because you've spent a lot of money to get to that point. Right. So that's, that, that's the, uh, and so what's changed now is that they have now that section of the, that's part of the Schedule A, the unreimbursed yes. job expense. They've now taken that completely out oh. no so more it 2106. is gone so that also just so we can give everyone sort of like a general perspective you know some people had those expenses so say a truck driver could have certain expenses that they could write off but the percentage of which they could write off was never nearly as high as the percentage of what an actor could write off correct right i mean it typically they uh, they had a right to whatever it cost them but typically it wouldn't be it wouldn't because be. most jobs most jobs you don't have most jobs that where you're employed you don't have an Employees. agent and a manager right. to pay and you who don't have a publicist taxes, and a yeah right? who are also paying taxes on that mm-hmm, money yeah mm-hmm. so you don't typically have that scenario right um so this is gonna this is gonna affect those folks who have you know your athletes your actors your uh, you know there's some musicians, salespeople uh, uh-huh. musicians uh to a lesser degree because musicians are often paid on Mm. Uh, 1099. I see. And that goes on a Schedule um, C, which unless you can they're still touring. use your business expenses I on. see. Right. Okay. Yeah, and le- a lot of musicians will tour, then that goes back to being employed income. I see. But when they're typically just doing gigs around town, they're, they're on Schedule they're C. They're sort of like an actor, yeah. an actor income basis. Great. So that's the main difference, and that's why people are really panicking, right. because actors traditionally have been able to to claim a lot of these expenses as business expenses and now that maybe is not going to be the case. And some people are panicking and you know I've had clients who've emailed me who are asking about incorporating and you know they didn't necessarily beat the standard deduction last year. Right. You know so they never they didn't itemize last year and yes. so it's like okay you didn't beat the standard last year the standard standard has gone up. Mm-hmm. So it might be a little bit ahead of the game to For start you. thinking about incorporating uh-huh. right now because uh-huh. that may not. I, I think it's like the tax bill came out and everyone panicked. Right. And everyone thought everybody should incorporate. Mm. Yes. And again, I don't believe in everybody should do one thing or yes. everybody should not. You know, I yes. think that you have to figure out what's best for your situation. Great. And so let's talk about that. Daphne, can you explain for our listeners who you think are the people that currently best qualify to stay in the personal tax 
bracket versus the people who should move on to a corporate tax bracket? I think that if you are not, it depends, it, again, because yes. it's, it's a filing status thing. Yes. What a single person brings in is solely acting income versus what a married filing joint person would bring in as sol yes. solely for, um, for acting. If you have a manager and an agent commission that's mm -hmm. coming off of that versus just an agent, like I don't think there are hard numbers mm. that you can say. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you probably... Have, yeah, because the, the you know, there's, because there's factors of how much you make and how much and how much you spend. Yeah. So the bo both are factors in whether or not you should incorporate. Great. And let's say then maybe what people who are not sure what they should do is they should call your firm, right. make an appointment and have a discussion about the pros and cons. And let's say if you are married, that's one category. Right. And maybe they should come in with their spouse and discuss together their options. If they are, maybe a lot of actors have, like you two, have a couple of sources of income that they're pulling from. That's another consideration, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. yes. Yes, and it's also a consideration like, because uh, what has not been affected by this is, is Schedule C income. So as, if you're out there and you're doing, um, and you're still new to town and you're non-union and you're doing non-union work, which means you're probably not being paid on a W-2, then you still have you're still you're not affected by this, so you right. can you can take all of your deductions on the Schedule C, which is a 1099. 1099 income, yeah, right, exactly, or cash income, um, great, yeah, or cash income. So let's talk about then. Let's talk about what is a 1099. I know you and I, Daphne, have talked at length about the unfortunate actors who come in who are new to the business and they come to you for the first time and they are like excited that they're going to make like eight grand back this year and then they have like a W-2 from their server job and they have like this other W-2 from their dog walking and then at the end they pull out like six 1099s <laughs> and then you have to give them the bad news. So can we walk through what that bad news discussion looks like? Well, 1099 is untaxed income. Right. So it goes on a Schedule C, mm -hmm. and you can reduce that income by your business expenses. Yes. But you essentially are going to end up paying, you know, federal, state, and then self-employment tax on top of the um, uh, federal and state taxes. So I, people come in not realizing those 1099s have not been taxed whatsoever. At all. At all. And, and depending on what bracket you fall into, right. it determines how much money you're going to owe right. on that. And if you didn't have great withholding on your W-2s, mm -hmm. then you find yourself with a tax bill at the end of your appointment that sometimes can reduce you to tears. I'd say often <laughs> reduces <laughs> new <laughs> actors to tears. I think there is a real truth that most new actors don't figure in uh, what I will call the, the, the tax bump that you get the next year. Similarly to when you are having a lot of income in one year, then your SAG dues go up. And a lot of people don't expect yeah. that to happen. That's also true because you get put into sort of like a new level as a person who pays taxes. And yeah. then the amount you owe is often then greater than it was or would have been. Yeah, one thing that's hard to understand um, it, that you have to wrap your head around is that um, it's a tiered tax system. So... You know, the more the more money. Obviously, we all know the more money you make, the more you're gonna have to pay. But the it's more that you make, the more they take you guys. It, it's it is very it's true, it is. and it's sometimes hard to wrap your head around. Okay, well, I made you know twice as much as I did last year, mm -hmm. so I should pay twice as much in taxes. It's like no, you probably will pay three times as much in taxes if you make twice as much. Um, and it's also confusing because uh, everyone and I. This conversation happens daily during tax season mm. for me uh, with more than one person usually that you get ex you, you get excited about a refund or a or you or you get sad about having to pay in mm -hmm. those are like almost the wrong way to look at how your taxes are done okay because getting a refund is because when we when you come in on tax day what we're figuring is is what was your tax for the year then you go and look and see how much you had withheld mm -hmm. and did you have enough withheld if you didn't then you owe if you if, if you, you did. did, then you then you get some money back. Right. So you know you hear people uh, talk about their tax return in in the in light of how much they got back or how mm -hmm. much they had to pay, and it's mm -hmm. like that's it's it's like what was your actual tax? Right. 
Did what was you, your were you actual taxed tax? enough this year? Yeah. And or did were you, you taxed and, too much this year? Because when you come to our office, we can't stop you from, if you come in and, like, I always show people what, as soon as we put in all the stuff, I go, here's what you would owe if we didn't take any deductions. Right. Yes. And I do that for a couple of reasons. One is to make me look good at the end. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> the other is, is to make me, to save my butt whenever somebody... Oh, still owe you get done and they still owe five grand. Yes. And you're like, yeah, but when we started, you owed 15. Yes. Exactly. So we changed your tax bill mm -hmm. by 10 grand. It's mm -hmm. just that you didn't have enough to cover that. That's right. By five grand. And what I and those, oh, go ahead. And then that brings me to a, another thought, though. Those people who um, don't pay attention to their their pay stubs throughout the year. Yes. Because I get a lot of clients who will. There are certain payroll companies that are notorious for not withholding properly, mm -hmm. like talent partners. You yes. know, they will I thought not. You were going to cough that one. <laughs> <laughs> talent talent okay, let's back up. There are some <laughs> payroll companies. <laughs> <Talent> <laughs> <partner>. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they don't withhold properly. Yeah. And so people will come in with W 2s with under withholding, and they're like, but I paid my taxes. You didn't pay enough. Yeah. That's... You know, and so, and if you're not tracking, like, part, it goes back to that part of your business responsibility mm -hmm. is when you get a check from your agent to not just be like, woohoo, and, and, you know, do the mobile deposit real yes, quick, yes. but to really look at your pay stub to and read say your checks. what, what was withheld, mm -hmm. what was this, that, and the other, mm -hmm. and no, and then track it the next time you get a pay stub, mm -hmm. you know, a paycheck in the mail, you look at it and track that your year to date is tracking properly, that oh, there's not so some true. missing check somewhere that you're like, that you actually got the money that you're paying taxes on. And, and track it that way so that when your W-2s come in at the end of the year, yes. that all matches up. But some people don't pay attention to that. So that was that. I, and that's going to, you know, I mean, depending on if someone incorporates or not, that's going to change a little bit too. But, which is back to the like the 1099 when people ask about self-employment tax, yes, you know. Yeah. When you have a W-2, you know, you've put in part of your um you know medicare and social security mm -hmm. and then the company has mm -hmm. but when you have a 1099 you're responsible as employer and employee so they're wondering why they owe so much on that schedule c well mm -hmm. it's because you're wearing both sides of the, of, of the coin yeah and head yeah the coin it's really the coin it's no coin. two sides i, I mean, was like I guess the hat. Two i was gonna say both hand. sides of the hat so yeah, and then i was the like coin yeah. is really right. I, are you right. flipping the hat to the front yeah. to the back <laughs> right, that's maybe right. something like the coin i think the coin's better you are right. <laughs> I feel like what I really recommend people to do is to, if you are newer to this game, to have, I, what I recommend to new actors, and you guys can discuss this, I recommend that they have more withheld than not, because it's always better to wait, to have mm -hmm. the tax season come and get a surprise of some money than to have tax season come and get a surprise of some owing. Yeah. And one thing that actors are, newest actors are tremendously terrible about because you think once you start getting jobs it's like that's permanent forever and that's just going to like hmm. continue to grow at that rate hmm. and so you just like start spending all your money you're like i'm just gonna make all this money and what i really recommend is for especially if you're getting 1099 income and if you're a really new actor it says right it says like 10 it says 1099 <laughs> right yeah. And what do you fill out when you get the job that indicates that you're going to get a 1099 sheet? Anything? A W9. A w you get a W9 as Versus a W4. To, great. So if when you show up to sign your contract, they hand you something that says W with the number 9, yeah. you're going to get a 1099 there you go. on that <laughs> job. And if you get a W-4, yes. then you're going to get divided by four is two. There we go. <laughs> you're going to get done. a W-2. And a W-2 <laughs> is the thing that they are paying all these uh, Social Security and all that stuff for you. Right. So just and not to put, you know, a nine on, yes. your, on your W-4. Mm. Right. Because some people want to try to get as much money in their check oh, as possible. Oh, I tell them the opposite. And then yeah, they zero. have under yeah. withholding. I, yeah. t I, I put a zero. Put a zero, I mean, that's good. Yeah, man. I mean, because I just would rather... Well, and the reason is, I can just tell you guys, I was audited for... I'll tell the listeners, I was audited for 2006 and then was flagged for 2007 and flagged for 2008. Oh, geez. I won, and good. the flags were 
taken off. Right. Because as you can see by my office, I'm <laughs> overly methodical <laughs> with my preparations. Right. But it wasn't. I it see wasn't, the 1099 on the wall. You see my 1099 on the wall, you guys. <laughs> she's, she's keeping her tax she's documents my, in one place. <laughs> it. I am. This is all my tax folders right now. Oh, there. my gosh. That's I amazing. Love yeah. It. Just because, like, you know, whatever you can do, you guys, to make it less exhausting that's amazing. at the end of the year. Yes. So that's something that I recommend people do only because actors are terrible at saving you guys mm. and things happen yes. and you think that money is your money and it's not. And I tell people to think of it like when you work at a restaurant, you're tipping out. You have to tip out the host. You got to tip out the busser. You got to tip out your uh, runners. And as an actor, you got to ticket tip out America. You have to tip <laughs> out your manager. You have to tip out your agent. OK, <laughs> so it's not yours. And just like when you're waiting tables, if you think I made one hundred fifty dollars tonight, but really you're only making a hundred, that fifty dollars was never yours to begin with. Right. Think of that like right. when you're having your actor income. OK, it was never your money. Don't and that goes it. back to the business savvy exactly. side of things, though, too, exactly. you know, which you have to you just have to plug into that side. I tell people you really have to find a way to enjoy it because you are a business and what I notice about the actors who work the most, they handle their business. Hmm. They handle their business. And if you're an actor who's like, oh, I just don't know, like I can't, and these tags, and blah, blah. Or, and it's fine if you want to pay somebody to do that, fine, great. There are people who are business people who are like, it's not worth my time to be interested in that, and it brings me down. But then you really have to pay somebody to handle that stuff for you as though you are a business, which is in fact what you are. Right? Yeah, true. Truth, you very guys. Very true, very true. Showing down truth. So truth let's bomb. talk about <laughs> being incorporated. <laughs> so you said there are a couple of different forms of incorporating. There's an LLC and a... There's uh, there's three major forms. I mean, there's more than, than that, but there's... For an um, actor, we'll th- say. For an actor, there's really only one. Which is? That is going to be good, probably, uh, is an S corporation. Great. So you could be, uh, you, the other options would be an LLC okay. or a C corporation, which is just a corporation. Yes. Um, the S corporation provides you with the best tax like uh, advantage. Great. Um, because there's no reason to be, it, um, this gets like kind of, it, it gets a little complex, but um, like an LLC, first of all, gives you no tax advantage at all. Okay. Zero tax advantage. Great. An LLC exists just as a, as limited liability, so it gives you limited liability. So most production companies are LLCs, I things see. like that. I so see. when they go, you know, make a movie, that's all, almost always an LLC, uh-huh. and that's so that because that's what the it's um, a legal advantage. It's a legal. It's a legal liability. It's, it has nothing to do with taxes. It's just a legal. I see. Thing. Okay, great. Um, so an LLC just costs you money. A C corporation. The problem with the C corporation that's really made for like corporations, um, big corporations, yeah. Bank so of America. So you're yes, <laughs> right. For big corporations, and that's all that you know. You heard with the tax bill, they're mm-hmm. slashing the corporate rate. Yes, that's talking about C corporations. So they dro- dropped it from thirty five percent to twenty one percent. So it's a, it a big, big drop. And the, the idea, you know, is that whether or not it'll work, because uh, it's it's kind of the old trickle down uh, theory, is that if you do that, you're going to bring the jobs back here instead of right. overseas. So because our corporate rates are so right. yeah, because uh-huh. they're and they pay that out of their profits. So I see. that's what the you know if, if Walmart ends up with a billion dollars profit at the end of the year, mm-hmm. then they had to pay thirty five percent out to the federal government. Now they're they would only have to pay twenty one percent. And the idea um, is that in doing so, jobs come back from Brazil and come to America. That would be I the see. idea. Yeah. Um, so an an S corp is really not. And S, I mean, a C corp is not really what actors. It. There, there right. could be situations. Yes. Because there are some advantages yeah. C corps, but we won't you know, get into Mark that. Mark Wahlberg is probably um, a C corp. Probably not. He produces not. so many shows. He's probably not. He oh, would probably okay. be an S corp. Okay. Good. Um, most likely. Okay. Because uh, an S corp can have a hundred employees. Okay. Oh, so here's the advantage to an S corp. Um, uh, because with a with an w- once you going back to what we we're talking about, where you have to pay the self employment tax, mm-hmm. when you become an S corp, you're now employed by your corporation. I see. So, um, uh, so your corporation is now your employer. So whenever you go to to sign your contract, you probably heard the term loan out. Mm-hmm. So you're being loaned out by your corporation to work for Disney or. Well, usually it's entertainment partners or talent partners. Basically, you're like your own employee. You're your own employee. So now, now, 
the, the entertainment partners is going to pay your corporation. Great. Um, so your corporation takes the money. So and, let's name this so it's entertaining for people. Yeah, and they let's don't do fall that. Asleep, okay. So let's pretend your corporate name is Unicorn Happy. There okay? we go, Unicorn <laughs> Happy. So I unicorn, love unicorn. I love unicorns too. <laughs> my daughter loves unicorns. Well, it's a girl thing. She's like very happy with this Unicorn okay. Happy thing. So Unicorn She's gonna want to become incorporated Happy now. Incorporated <laughs> S Corp. Yes. Okay. And you are actor Schmactor. Is actor Schmactor. Okay? okay. So now actor Schmactor. Is not an employee of Disney. Great. Actor Schmachter is now an employee of Unicorn Happy Great. Incorporated. And so when you go to work for Disney, Disney now pays Unicorn Happy Happy Incorporated. Great. Yes. You got to remember the happy part. Yes. So, <laughs> and now unicorns, unicorn. It's happy unicorn. Now it's you, how the unicorn makes you feel. Right. right. Exactly. Right. Okay, good. So, um, as Daphne was saying earlier, when you're paid as an employee, they're paying half of your Social Security and Medicare. So that's no longer happening. So you're losing that benefit whenever you become an S corp. Okay. That's why you wouldn't want to become a C corp because with a C corp you have to. Anyway, I won't get into that. No, because we you want to stay an S corp. Right. Because we don't want to hear about what we don't need to do. <laughs> right. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> okay, good. So you want to stay as you. So you want to you want to go um, S corp, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, uh, but right now, the biggest reason is that you can now that you that is the only way you're going to be able to take your deductions, right? Unless you're um, unless you're only making money on Schedule C. Yes, unless you're only getting 1099 income, which right. is mostly like non-unit income or weird random income, right? Then you really need to be getting, in order for you to claim your deductions, corporations are the corporations. Way to go. Yeah. Now I hear there is still a certain amount that you're allowed to claim every year. Well, the, the no. deduction no. has changed. So that's one of the things we didn't really talk about, though, was some of the changes with the tax law, okay. like how the personal exemptions are gone now, how the standard deduction has increased um, the what's the, the state and local and property tax cap. Like there are certain things, I think, that would be um, beneficial to mm. notate that, that affect people, I think, the most yeah, right. outside of just the business deductions. Okay. But for someone who's like a single um, taxpayer, the standard has gone to 12000 Right. So and you're so, allowed to claim up to 12000 in deductions? No. Well, it's not, okay. it's not, you're, it's not you itemizing. It's okay. just, that's the standard deduction. This is on the personal return. That so a personal return one thing on, to try that to, you would have. One okay. thing you have to delineate whenever you become a corporation is that the corporation exists as its own entity. You are right. no longer that corporation. So uh -huh. Unicorn Happy is its own thing. It's its own umbrella. It's own its own person in a yes. sense. And, it, and has so, an, it has an, a tax number. It has a tax like number. Like your social security number. Right. Right. Uh -huh. It's a federal ID number, and yeah, then and then it has to do its own taxes. Yes. So Unicorn Happy has to do a corporate tax return. Yes. Which is um, due a month earlier than a personal tax return. Correct. Great. Um, so it has uh, and what um. So it's due so, March fifteenth. So it's of April. so it can get confusing when you start talking about so because what Daphne's talking about is like on the personal return, a lot of things have changed. Yes. We'll get into that then. Um, and so that's what she's saying is that a lot of things have changed. They doubled the standard deduction. Okay. They're taking away the exemption. Can it, we talk about, so what does double the standard deduction mean to an actor? It means nothing really because because of the fact that they've taken out the ability to take any deductions. I see. So all it means is that you will, you will whether or not you're a corporation, uh -huh. you will still get that standard deduction. And so what is a standard deduction? Can you tell me what that means? So when you look at your tax form, a yeah. 1040 is usually, Easy. I mean, a 1040 is two two pages. Yes. Um, at the bot, But you arrive at the bottom of the page on mm -hmm. your adjusted, to your, at your adjusted gross income. Yes. So let's say your adjusted gross income was $100,000. Right. Then you go to the top of page two. Mm hmm and the next thing down is either itemized or standard deduction. I see. And um, in the past, you actors were most of the time itemized. itemizing because the old standard deduction was sixty three hundred dollars. I see. And you would itemize, and your deductions might reach twenty grand. So they would be so better then, than the sixty three hundred dollars. Exactly, right. way better than the sixty three. So then you would take a hundred and subtract whatever that number is. So let's right. say it was ten grand. Right. And then you had the exemption underneath that mm -hmm. which is just for being alive right. you had a four thousand dollar exemption 
if you were married, then it was 8000 If you had kids, then they each get it. So the exemption is for each person in the household. I see. So you go 100 minus 10 is 90 minus 4 is 86 and uh -huh. that would be your taxable income. $86,000. Is your taxable income. So then there you go to the tax table and you go this is how much I owe. And um, now it's 12. Now it's just 12. It's just 12 total. 12 total, there's no exemption so you go 100 minus 12. 12. So your and taxable 12? income is 80 like automatically? Well, if you're single, if, if you're, you're married single, filing joint then it's your 24. standard 24. is 24. 24. Okay. So total I can it's basically giving me to a minus twelve thousand on yeah. top of whatever I made permanently. Yeah. So if you're in a particular income, that might still be fine and beneficial to it's, you. It's going to be beneficial to to anyone, right? Because the deduction, the standard deduction, lowers your lowers your taxable income, right? Because so, it lowers that sort of tier that we're talking about, right? Of, which tier you're in to be taxed. But, and it, the tax but I don't know if you want to get in. Changing also. Okay, I don't know yeah. if you want to get into the weeds of this, but I've always thought the standard deduction is kind of an evil deduction mm. because what it does is it makes a dumber taxpayer. And because you don't, because it, what it's doing is it's taking away your itemization of yes. stuff. Yes. And so you just get, it, you, they, you know, they did all of this. Part of this, they said, was in the name of making things simpler and being uh -huh. able to do your taxes on a postcard. Uh -huh. I don't believe in that. Right. And I also think that this. Know your money, right? Right. Know, know, your, know money. your money and know, and itemize. And it also hurts people who actually took the time to itemize. Right. And it hurts, it hurts places like L.A. and New York, which you probably heard. Because these are higher cost of living places, right. it hurts actors directly because they actually itemize deductions. Right. So um, that is that is, and but but now they've taken away that ability for actors to do that. Now, if you own a house and if you give a lot to charity, mm. you'll you'll still you still may be itemizing, but you I just see. won't be itemizing. Your acting expenses. Your acting expenses. Right. Which and the lovely thing is that, you know, we get to pay tax, in, unless you incorporate, right. you get to pay taxes on the commissions that you give your agent and managers that right. you never see a dime of, and then they have to pay taxes on that as income. Right. So it's yeah. It really seems a sham taxed. when you sort of do that, when you, yeah. when you go that route. Because many of us are, are one, well, people have lawyers, like when you get into all that, it's like you are really paying a staff of people, and then they're going to have to pay taxes right. on that. If I'm paying a publicist, they're going to have to pay that mm -hmm. money. If I'm paying a exactly. lawyer, there's that money. If right. I'm paying a stylist, there's that money. And all of them have to claim their that tax, income. That as right. a, a taxable income anyway. Sham, you guys. Mm, sham. It is. It is. Let's talk a couple of questions we have from listeners. Can an actor funnel multiple income entities into a single corporation? So if I was a dog walker, and also an actor, can I funnel my dog walker income and my actor income into an S corp? Yes. Great. It needs to be. Um, uh, they can't. The, they can't be at cross purposes, and it's hard to explain. But like, you couldn't be like a law firm and a dog walker. But you could oh. be a and a. You can be an accountant and a dog walker. It's if you're offering that service of accounting and a service of. It, so, if, but if if you go into like a. Um, uh, I forget exactly. I, it's hard to explain, but like you could. But in other words, for the mo most of the people listening, yes, you would be able to do acting that. and something acting else. and being a and personal LA. trainer, and I see. you know you and can you'd be an actor and a waiter and claim both at the same time, or a actor. Well, and a you wouldn't. You most likely you wouldn't want to run your waiter income through your corporation because right. you wouldn't want to yeah you i mean i i think theoretically you could i don't even know I, they, they wouldn't even let pay you. you as a corp so well they wouldn't right. let you so they, they wouldn't, wouldn't allow they don't you let, to, just because you have a corp doesn't mean everyone's going to pay people you out there who, through the corp right yeah right there are going to be people out there who have that question you know right. they're servers or bartenders mm -hmm. or waiters but somebody who's a personal trainer or who is sort of living that similar sort of mm -hmm. actor uh freelance lifestyle yeah. If you're freelance in another way, you can funnel that income into your actor right. S corp. Yeah, your freelance program. service work you can you can put through there, um, and even if you had a sort of retail thing going, um, you could put like that through Etsy it. or yeah, like an Etsy yeah, something or something like, like that. that. Yeah. Okay, great. Can multiple people combine their income under a single corporate umbrella? They can, but it's going to be a partnership at that point. So right. you you uh, you have so to be choose carefully. Be careful, yeah. So I, I wouldn't suggest it if you're just trying to do it to save money on the corporate tax um, right. on getting your corporate taxes done because 
what happens is is that the, that is a 50-50 Everything. partnership so you only do that if you're in a partnership together like if you if you're married you run a husband photography and wife studio or, or uh-huh. husband and wives can do it yeah yes. um and that you know husband and wives should think about it uh in terms of like a, the you, you almost want to get legal advice on that yes um because it, if you're if you're the type of husband and wife that carries their own bank accounts and mm. those kind of things mm-hmm. then you may not want to incorporate together because the corporation is a Single joint, unity, right. and so a uh, uh, single entity. So, mm-hmm. like all the money that goes in there is going to be, it's 50, going 50. into that corporation, and whatever the profits are, are fifty fifty mm-hmm. coming out. Mm-hmm. Now, in terms of how that works on taxes, it's not that much different. Okay, but it means everybody sees ev- everything that's because a lot of times people want to have it separate because they're like, I don't want my husband like, yeah. You know, I like, have a joint account if I with my husband, but because he's not in the business yeah. at all, he's a teacher. I'm forming an S corp for myself yes. personally, but yes. he's not on it because yes. there's no reason for him to. He's not going to be paid through my S corp. Right. He's not going to, you know. So it's not. It wasn't. It didn't make sense. But maybe if for you me. were two actors or a lot right. of actor actors or actor writers or anything in that mm-hmm. zone, maybe that would make sense if they're married and their marriage is looking good for now, <laughs> right, yeah. and they feel like they want it. But that's definitely something have that a you sit down talk, have a baby. Yeah. How you feel about yeah. how we well, how, where I we dis- at right yeah. now? And I, honestly, I do a disclaimer that I'm not a lawyer, so yeah. it's like you 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 have to deal with the consequences of what that could be if something happens in the marriage. So yeah. because that corporation is fifty fifty. If so. one of you becomes hugely successful and the other one has less luck and you're together for five years and all that income is then now under that S corp, then just know you might want some advice on how that might shake down. Right. Cause that happens all the yeah. time. Yes. Great. How far back can the government audit you? AKA how long do I have to keep my papers for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the stated, um, Gen- the general rule is three years from the the date of your of your of the filing. Okay. So three years from April fifteenth, you know, of the year that you filed, or the extension deadline if you do the extension. Okay. Or when you actually filed, they okay. have three years. So if you're past the extension deadline, they have three years from that date too. Okay. Good. But I, I, we always say keep longer. I keep my so I keep we keep them, I keep everything. Longer. Keep them for seven years is typically a better idea. Um, keep all the stuff because you, if there's any doubt about anything that comes up, because what they, they can go past three years if they suspect you for not reporting income. Right. So, well, and I have to say after having been audited, I just mm, have everything. I yeah. have everything from 2005. I want to say. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like I went back and it's not, it's not that oh, you it's real, not hard. you overzealous right I, now. I'm <laughs> always, but I'm sitting, keeping but, it going. But I'm just, you know, we're keeping the theme happening here. Right. God for being an overachiever. Uh, but it's, I have it all in, you know, just like little fire. Right. No, things totally. And it doesn't take much space. And I actually am great about throwing things out. Yeah. No, I got I'm rid of my you. books, but I kept my taxes. So that's what I did, you guys. And it's very important that even when you get rid of all your stuff, if you, once you get rid of receipts and all that kind of stuff, you always want to keep the tax return itself and the like the the little packet that we give you with the W two. W twos. I see the W twos. Because you never know if there'd be a problem with Social Security down the line, and uh, you want to be able to prove all that. So keep that packet. You can get yeah. rid of the receipts and all that stuff, but keep all the that documentation. Packet. But keep the yeah. great. So I have these questions for you. Are there any questions that you guys particularly want to address? Um, I don't know if we how how much time we have, but like uh, you probably at some point want to get into um corporation like how that works, set up and cost and those kind of. I things. do want to get into yeah. that. Yes. So. One thing that's not we were just talking about this. One thing that's not um income tax, an income tax issue, but I think everyone thinks it is an income tax issue. Okay, is the city of LA business tax? Right. It is not. So yeah, it is not an income tax issue, except we get calls about it all the and time. And you do have emails. to do it on time, or you do have to <laughs> yes pay. So you so want to yeah. by the last the last day in February mm-hmm. is the date that you need to file for an exemption as a creative artist mm-hmm. or small business, whichever one. Um, but it is due at the end of February, um, February twenty eighth. I think last year was the. 29th, I think maybe this year, but it is, um, they discover you via your schedule C. Mm. So, but they don't know what kind of business you have. They don't mm. know the particulars. Meaning of it. your 1099. Yes. Your 1099 or cash income. Right. So when your schedule C is 
is filed, yes. then they're like, they'll send you, we get clients all the time that get a bill in the mail from the city of LA mm. saying you owe us business tax. And then mm. we get a call going, why do I owe, and, and the right. panic. panic. And it's like, okay. Now it depends on where you live. Not mm-hmm. everyone has to file for the exemption. Uh-huh. Some people go, I'm not going to file for one because I always, you know, make my income on W-2s. Right. But you just don't know what a year is going to present. Right. So if you don't file for one in February and then you find yourself with 1099, you know, Schedule C income in October, right. you can't retroactively do anything about that. Mm-hmm. So it's best to kind Unless of... Unless you haven't already signed up. Well, true. You can sign up right then. Right then you can. Yes, that's you, true. If you've never you like signed get up. get one. If you get one, then you can sign up then. But if you already have an existing one... You just need to make sure, make you sure do you're that. renewing it. Renew, yeah. And 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 sometimes people go, well, I didn't, you know, I got this bill in the mail. Why, you know, it's like, okay, just do it as part of your business. Yes. As part of your upkeep on the business side of things that we were talking about. Yes. Every February, I have a February first, I have an alarm that goes off on my mm-hmm. phone that says renew my city of LA business tax. Yeah, I have asked for the same thing for my tax prep, where I have everything that I need for the year and it's like October this has to go in and February this has to go in and that way it sort of is all and I'm not like because your life gets busy randomly yes it you're does. like bored for three weeks and then you're like ah <laughs> <Jack> <laughs> crazy, totally. you know and then those three weeks that you're busy are the three weeks that you that needed you to do to that do it. business tax renewal or not <laughs> but you don't remember and so you freak out and then you can't find the card and so you call Daphne and you're panicked and Let's just save Daphne the headache, you guys. Uh, just, just file it, okay? Call the bane of, so the usually bane it's like existence. a little postcard that you get in the mail. And sometimes if you're corporate, you'll get one for your corporation and you'll get one for your Personally, personal. Yeah, right. And if you make less than if you make less than three hundred thousand dollars a year and you are an artist in this city, then you get to not worry about it. Yeah. Exactly. Great. As long as you file for you file the, the exemption. exemption. As long as you what file you're the filing for. You're filing for the exemption. Which you can do online. Yes. Yeah. It takes like five minutes, you guys. And there's a whole section about it on our website on chucksloan.com. Love it. That walks people through like just, Their, hey. their website is great, you guys, I have to say. Like they've really tended a good job of being like, Listen, baby it? actors. I had nothing to do with <laughs> no, it's like, I'd like to take credit for it. Please. It's like, listen, little baby actors, do not panic. Here's step one. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about the corporate tax uh, cost and maintenance. Um, yeah, so um, obviously what you're going to be trying to figure out when is like, if you want to become incorporated is what is going to be the cost and then what's going to be the benefit right. of the cost. So. You're looking at, um, as a rule of thumb, you're looking at at a minimum of about twenty six to twenty seven hundred dollars a year mm-hmm. to keep your corporation running. Okay. How that breaks down is, uh, you have to pay California franchise fee eight hundred dollars a year. California is by far the worst state in the union for their with their franchise fee. Okay, and it's because they got they got seventy and sunny all year yes. round. And they got the beaches. Everybody wants to work in California. Everybody wants to be here. So right. they are like, all right, we're going to... Tax we're gonna, the hell out of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's your minimum. If if you're going over that minimum, it's because things are going well. So you, whoop, you whoop. deal with it. Yes. Whoop, whoop. Right. But if you're... It, but it, what it means is if you have a really bad year and you make no money, you still pay them 800 bucks. Yes. Um, so there's 800 bucks, And then you have the corporate tax return, which costs $500 right. if you do it um, with do us. Yep. Um, and then you have... Um, on top of that, you have to have payroll. Mm-hmm. So going back to you being employed by your corporation, an mm-hmm. S corporation is required to pay their employees on a W-2. You mm-hmm. can't just 1099 yourself. Okay. Um, and you can't just pass through all of the income as a dividend. Okay. So it's required that you have a W-2. So that means you have to run payroll. And payroll is like its own little universe in the whole like accounting world. Okay. Um, so... Uh, payroll is going to cost you five hundred ninety-five dollars a year. Okay. Uh, if you're if it's if it's just one person on the corp, if you add a person, it's another hundred bucks. Okay. That's if you do it through um, me or uh, the people who do it at Chuck Sloan. Okay. Um, so there you're at nineteen hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the last piece of that puzzle is bookkeeping. Mm-hmm. So bookkeeping is very important when you have a 
Corporation. And can we talk about what um, that is? I know you will. So you, so you now you when you you know up till now, whenever you would just you you come in and you fill out the packet, you're all you're doing is going and looking up your expenses, right? Mm-hmm. You're going and seeing like how much did I spend on headshots? How much did I spend on this or that? You go through your credit card receipts and you go through your receipt, your physical receipts and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Now. You have to have a legitimate chart of accounts Mm -hmm. and this real accounting work. So you have to have your income and expense accounts. So Mm -hmm. you got to track income. You got to track expense. No one's sending you W-2s or 1099s anymore. So So you got to do all that. how much money has been deposited into your corporate account. Right. And you have to have um, a separate corporate account. I don't know if we mentioned that earlier, but mm-hmm. you, your corporation has to have its own account. Yes. Um, Unicorn Happy. Yes. Unicorn and, Happy uh, Incorporated. Unicorn Happy, Happy Incorporated. And that and is then that is a separate account at a bank, and then you get right. checks that say Unicorn right. Happy Incorporated, and then that is the check that then you pay people out of from now exactly. on as your you're, business expenses. You're you ha- you might have a debit card with that, and you might have you might you can even get a credit card. Yep. It, can, it exists just like you. So yep. you can have that, all of those things. And whenever you spend on business, you need to spend from Unicorn Happy. Account. Uh, that account. Yes. Um, and then it then it then that all flows to your chart of accounts. Mm-hmm. So you gotta have a, a real chart of accounts. Usually QuickBooks is what most people are gonna mm-hmm. use because mm-hmm. it's the 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 industry leader and it's probably the best one out there for small business. Okay. Um and uh so um where it gets a little complicated is where payroll sort of enters into your bookkeeping too, mm-hmm. because it's no longer, because you, you're having to figure out like how does this stuff relate to where what my bank account is. Okay. Because now used to you go to your bank account and you go that's just an expense. Well, when you pay when you deposit taxes from the corporation. Okay. From on Unicorn behalf, Happy. From Unicorn Happy on uh-huh. behalf of Actor Schmactor. Yes. Then Actor Schmactor though that that looks like an expense to Unicorn Happy when uh-huh. you see that federal tax deposit. I see. But it's not because that's Actor Schmactor's right. taxes that are being paid in. I see. The only expense to the corporation is Actor Schmactor's salary. So can we talk about that in terms of like money? So let's say so let's Unicorn say, Happy has makes a hundred grand this year. Yeah. So Actor Schmactor makes a hundred grand this year. So let's say so so how it would uh, so more accurately what would happen is let's say Unicorn Happy nets 100,000. So okay. let's say Unicorn Happy had $130,000 come in yes. and had 30,000 in expenses. Great. So there's $100,000 left. Great. Then actor then actor Schmacter has to be paid a reasonable salary uh, from Unicorn Happy. Oh. So what that is is kind of like a uh, amorphous sort of thing. It's like <laughs> how do you decide what's a reasonable salary? Yes. Um you want to at least have that probably be 50%. Some people use 60 40. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's based on like comparison rates mm-hmm. and uh, whatever. So let's say it's 50 50. So you have $100,000 in net income. Actor Schmactor gets paid $50,000. of that. And so that's just like, so I can explain it to them. Mm-hmm. Like the restaurant you work at has a like group of employees and right. then they're paying for food and they're paying for dishware. And so the, uh, from a, from like a tax standpoint, that restaurant is only suppo- is only considered to be making in profit X amount of money a year. Right. Correct. Yeah. So actor Schmacter <laughs> is like the is is one of the is is the busser and right. the it's server the, and the host and the manager all in one, and Unicorn Happy is the restaurant, and the government is going to look at Unicorn Happy and say. Okay, Unicorn Happy as a corporation, what is the reasonable expectation of profit that they made this year? No, what's the reasonable um, salary to actor Schmacter? Okay, great. So considering the, the, our profit, uh, eh, sort of, yeah, sort okay, of. Great. So that's what gets a little bit. It's Tricky. like, uh, and that's what you always have to like make that decision your on on your own, but with advice from yeah, tax sure. your tax guy or sure. your accountant. Um, and so let's say so let's go back you got 130,000 gross. Yep. You have 100,000 net. You pay 50 to actor Schmacter, which means you really have 50,000 net. Mhm. Um because that 50 is an expense to the corporation. Right. So now you take that 50 that that was profit. Uh-huh. And that becomes a dividend to actor Schmacter. Okay. So now when you so now let's move over to actor Schmacter's personal return. Personal return. Actor Schmacter is going to have a W2 for $50,000. Okay. And is going to have a K one, uh-huh. which is the where the dividend is reported uh-huh. for fifty thousand dollars. Okay. So actor Schmacter will pay taxes on a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. 
Um, uh, the actor's manager will pay taxes on a hundred thousand or fifty thousand. On a hundred thousand. Okay, great. Because they have a hundred thousand dollars on their tax return. Now yes. taxes will have been taken out. Yes. Uh, out of the fifty thousand W two, if you do things right, you'll take out enough for 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 the taxes on that whole hundred thousand dollars. Right. So that when you actually do your personal return, everything's even. Everything's mm-hmm. like comes out okay. Right. So when you that and that's where payroll comes in. So you do mm. payroll at the end of the year, mm. and you decide out of that. So you pay that fifty thousand dollar w-2 okay and you got to withhold taxes to cover that whole hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars so those actors who are a corporation do you recommend as i'm sure you do that they don't spend all their money that year oh yes oh, oh, yes so and that, that way when taxes come along and they have to pay a certain amount in their taxes that's covered exactly so you have you have to think of it as like you know if you go do a, a guest star right or if you've got a series regular right and you want, you see a lot of times less than half of the gross on that check. I, I mean, that's the thing that I we we're, we I have a question for that later, but that I'd yeah. say is the biggest thing that actors don't realize coming in, right? And they don't realize, especially when the big jobs start coming. Mm-hmm. So, like when you have a co-star and you're getting eleven hundred dollars, and then you have like three of those. Right. That's not here nor there. But when you book that double scale national out of nowhere. Or you get that, you know, limited series, or you get that guest recurring for twelve episodes, and the money starts really becoming a sizable chunk that now puts you into a new tax bracket. That's really where actors start spending their money when they should be saving their money. Yeah. Because you're excited that you have money now, and you do things that you haven't been able to do for a while, like buy a new computer, yeah, which seems reasonable. Get a new car because your old car is just the worst. Right, yeah. And so you get like a new car. And it's all these things that you're like, once I get a big job, I'll do these things. And then you do. But yeah. then like life is also cost money. And then at the new year, you end up having to pay you several in, grand. In hock to the IRS. Yeah. In hock to the IRS. And you're now back where you were, but worse. But with a new computer, you guys. Right, a yeah. new computer. <laughs> <laughs> that, that you have to sell burgeoning... to pay your taxes. That you have to sell to pay those taxes. <laughs> A burgeoning career. That's what it's that. It's like that's you need to store statement. like the ant. No, yeah. So, right. you need, so you do want to, um, uh, the kind of rule of thumb that we typically use is you want to keep half of. Yes. Everything. So you, you want like a, if you're going to do the half and half thing. So mm-hmm. if you have a hundred thousand dollars net, mm-hmm. so you've spent all your business stuff already. Mm-hmm. Spend what you need to spend on your business. That's yep. good. Cause yep. that's investing in your future, your business. So you spend what you need to spend that hundred thousand dollars that's left over after expenditures you want to keep 50 of that for taxes. Mm-hmm. So the other 50 you can spend on to, to pay rent and to buy your new car yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yes. But you want 50 of that for taxes. And what I recommend to you guys is go open up an account at the SAG after Federal Credit Union. That's really hard to get to. Do a savings account. Right, yeah. That's so a there's good idea. no debit cards. Like you can't do anything with it. Mm-hmm. And you just put them when you get your check. You, you and you take the check and you put 50% of that automatically into that savings account and then you forget that it existed. And then after tax season happens, after you make sure that things are okay, then you maybe feel like you can do maybe a nice little vacation. Maybe you buy a bottle of wine. But also, you're an actor. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just save it and reinvest yes. it into your yes. career. Yeah. Right? And I say it's it's in it even more nuanced than that is it is that it's fifty percent of the net, right. so that's very important because if you had if you got a check for because what's going to happen now it's just like a ten ninety nine yes. now your corporation if you go do a if you go do a top of show guest star and they give you ten ten grand for yeah. the week right um, so this is more than top of show right so you get ten, 10 grand let's say you easy. get ten grand yeah ten grand's yeah. easy let's say you get ten grand for the week yes that ten grand. It, maybe your agent's going to take it first, but let's say they don't. That ten grand, your your corporation is going to get a check for ten grand. Yes. So you actually want to put away more than five grand because mm-hmm. you got to pay expenses out of that ten grand. Mm-hmm. That's so right. it's whatever is the net. Your net on that ten grand may only be eight grand. Yep. So you only want to take four grand for your personal expenses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So because if you did fifty fifty right. there, you That's still right. you wouldn't have enough to pay for your. So it's be what he means by net. By net is like your agent is going to take out those right, two yeah. grand, but you still have to pay taxes on your ten grand. Right. As according to you being a corporation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it's like a no, you don't. No, you don't. You don't. But 
you but you'll have to pay taxes on eight grand right so the point is is that if you if you were to just split the 10 and take five for personal and use three for expenses I see what you're saying you're not going to have enough no you're, you're not. not going to have enough for taxes right. at that point so you want to wait until you've had to you've taken into account expenses so ultimately you just want to save as much as you can what i always don't tell go crazy spending is never think you've, you've gotten rich just yeah. don't just no. don't do it just don't do it until you have opened up your own production company that has six shows on HBO you and go. you have four properties in Malibu. That's maybe yeah. when you can be like, cool, we'll chill. And that it's goes to just the business point. side of like, there's there's financial responsibility yes. with, you know, have a budget. Yes. You know, and, yeah. and if you're able to live on three grand a month and then, you start making more than that, yeah. still live on, on three, three grand, grand a month. month. Yeah. You know, and yeah. everything else. At least else. give yourself a year of doing that yes. before you start you know before because then you can see after taxes then you can see how much you have left over then you right. know what you have because even before the tax changes it's like you know i've had clients that come in and they've had a really great year they yeah. booked a lot of commercials and they're yeah. like woohoo and they go crazy yes. you know they're eating out all the time they're doing nothing they have nothing to show for it after right. the fact That's right. they come in the next year they didn't have a they whole lot like of success two they commercials that barely owing or something and then it's like they don't have anything saved it's like oh my gosh i need to go on a payment plan cuz i don't have any money yep. to pay my yeah, tax right. yes. and it's like Wait a minute! You just made a hundred grand last yeah, year. Right. They're like that's gone. It's gone. And it's like what? You know? So yeah. it's just to use a little wisdom. And this is what I'm saying about really getting in with, you know, a a department, a program, a a, a company, just that that takes your profession seriously as its own entity, and that's why I really am so grateful that you guys have this specialty because it's obviously needed in this town as we're an actor showbiz town but it's that sort of perspective that somebody who handles actors regularly all the time is going to have and it's going to be able to communicate to you ahead of time when you have a good year and say listen you've had a really great year now I'm hoping that you have an awesome year next year too but in case you don't let's not blow all this money so you've got this much left over mm -hmm. let's just hold on to it for the year and just trust me and then maybe we'll talk next year so that somebody's really looking out for you and your long-term interest right right because our business is so up and down and it is you know i mean you know we all hope for consistency yeah you know and to consistently i want work, all but... of you on a shonda rhyme series of 14 years i do you know? <laughs> I, I receive want... it girl yeah, i receive I want it for you daphne <laughs> i want it <laughs> But it may not come <laughs> or it may not come for a while. You know, for some people, they may not get their Shonda Rhyme series until they're well into their 40s, 50s and 60s. And listen, yeah. I hope for you that incredible 50s, 60s. Gray I love hair how retire. you gave it a 20 year span because we know Shonda going to be around <laughs> no, for a minute. Shonda, <laughs> Shonda's not going anywhere. Let's talk no, about Shonda. Didn't she make billions of dollars yeah, with no. Netflix? Yeah, she's she's she's, she's got good. quite the deal going. So we all got 20 years yeah, to get on right. a Shonda show. Yeah. That's right. Shonda, 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 Shonda. Shonda, save us. <laughs> Save us, Shonda. What are the biggest mistakes you see actors make with their income taxes? I think we've covered a lot of them. Yeah, just not, just not, not knowing saving. how much. Yeah, not saving enough. Mm -hmm. We've seen some pretty extreme cases. And not, and people you know, are breaking down their and forms, crying because of you know? it. Yeah. So even if you don't incorporate and you come in, um, or even this year, you know, clients will come in and they'll have five W twos and they haven't kept any of their pay stubs, so they don't know they should have got seven W twos, oh, and they file their taxes, and then the next thing you know. You know, whatever whatever they're supposed to get in the mail, the IRS has already gotten as right. well. So right. the IRS is like, yo, <laughs> I mm, yeah, right. you had Can three you 1099s and two W-2s yeah, that you, you didn't can, put on your return. Yeah, so you know, I've had clients back. pull out forms with like ketchup and mustard stains on them, like trying to spread them out. And it's oh, like, shit. really? So just And that's not a business person, you guys. Of your records. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> that's not a business person. Sure, yeah. And that's not an actor that is being taken seriously. You're not taking yourself seriously as a business when you behave that way. And if you don't take yourself seriously as a business, then the business is not gonna continually take you seriously. And what I really recommend is for every contract that you have, you get when you get the job and you get your W-2 or you get your 1099 or whatever, and you get your, or you're not your 1099, you get your W-4 or your W-9, or you just sign the contract, you, I ask production for a copy of the front page of the contract. Then I take the front page of the contract. I take a copy of the tax, uh, whatever tax thing I had them fill out. 
and I add Usually that to w4 the folder or... that now has a name on it of that job. So let's say you book a McDonald's commercial. So I have now a folder that says McDonald's on it. The contract of McDonald's is in the folder, and then the W-4 or the W-9 that I filled out, copy of it is also in the folder. So that I know when the year comes out, I have all of the checks that I get, I've placed in order of receiving them in that folder. So there's no yes. weirdness. I've read the checks as they go along to see there's no missing checks that suddenly my agent didn't send me. And I will tell you guys, that happens all the time. Mm. Yes. People discover, and it's not because anyone's being a criminal, things just happen because accounting is messy. Yeah. And they'll discover there's a $2,000 discrepancy between what their final check number says they have and what they actually had. Well, and sometimes people just compare the year to date alone, no. and that's not enough. Because mm -mm. if in January I get a check for a $1,000 gross, mm -hmm. and then February I don't get anything, mm -hmm. and then and then March I get a check for a $1,000, but it shows my year to date as 4500 what happened to the other 2500 You know right. what I mean? Like, yes. where did it go? Right. So then you have to find out, was this cash? Yes. What happened? And that and happens all the time, you guys. And not just your agents. Talent partners, criminal partners does it. Uh, uh, play, payroll companies do that all the time. And money just goes missing. And I can't tell you the number of actors that I've taught to then go back and look at their checks. And they realize they were missing big money. And now it's too late. Like four years have gone by. It's yeah, done. Yeah. Oh, but you can get it. You can get it. You have to go to the... You have to look it up on it's the like California. It's like a whole it's thing. A, it's a pain in the It's process. a process. It's a pain. But if you thing. track it, you can create less headache for yourself and you just in the had, long run. You just ask for that money and, they, and, and you'll find it. What can an actor do to make your life easier? Fill out the packet. Fill out the packet, you guys. Bring it. Be prepared. Just yes. fill it out. Yes. And, you know, it's it's not just for us either. It's for them because if we, if we spend... Like our, t our our appointments are an hour and a half long, mm -hmm. and if we spend the time trying to unravel the crap that's not been done or prepared, mm. then we're not really going to be able to give you quite as good of a service mm -hmm. as what you would want. Get um, the most for your money, you guys. Yeah. Get that bang for your buck. Yeah. Great. Uh, go ahead. Nothing, Nothing else. Ahead. Yes. Do you, are you are we getting wrapping it yeah, up? Yeah, we're wrapping Cause it up. Because I think that one thing that probably I, I think you asked this earlier and we didn't really uh, nail it was um, what and you might have to tease this at the beginning okay, because we, this is the very end this and is probably it. people want to know um, is how much do you you know what is that threshold of when you want to become incorporated? Yes. So we would said you know it, it's factor the factor is how much you make and how much you, you spend. spend. Right. So um, there is no like set number. Uh, but you have to take into account like what your tax bracket is and things mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. as a rule of thumb, if you're not, if you're spending, if you're, you'd have to be spending at least 12, 12 grand on mm -hmm. your acting career. Yes. Um, most likely to make it worth it. Yeah. Um, and that's I want to say you should be doing that. You guys, you should be you, investing in. Your yeah. Career. So, and you know, but and that's inclusive of not just like writing a check for classes and headshots and agent commissions, but you know, like we've lost mileage. We've lost other things that yeah. aren't um, right. a is tangible a check. Yeah. You know, yes. we drive around this city so much All for day, auditions every day. Yeah. and classes and everything. Mm -hmm. And so that whole business expense on the personal side of things mm -hmm. is gone now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just think that it's not always dollar for dollar. Some of that yes. is tracking time for and, tracking. Yeah, just yeah. The, the traffic, I mean, not the traffic, the traveling yes. you know, mm -hmm. that we've lost. So. That's right. Yeah, like, for example, for me this last year, I had my manager, I had my agent, I had a publicist, mm -hmm. I had a stylist, I had hair and makeup people, oh my gosh, yeah, and right. then I had to pay for, th like, I either paid for then clothes and stuff, too, yeah, to go right. to things. And so, like, that's a business, Yeah. right? But if you are waiting tables, say, and you have $2,000 of acting income from the two guest stars, guest stars that you made... And all that you've invested in your career is like three rounds at the Groundlings, which is like nine hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Then maybe not worth it to right. you this no, year. No, definitely, definitely not. Great. It's just not something that everyone needs to think that it's a bandwagon thing that needs right. to be jumped on. You and know, there's, I, there's, you know, you can consult, you can inquire. Yes. And the other thing I find a lot too is that people are 
asking like random like in the Facebook groups right. or in like you know they're like should I do this well no one really knows your situation except yes. your tax preparer or someone who you give access to your finances your, your, your previous taxes or your mm-hmm. finances mm-hmm. or like what so it's like to I think people want general advice mm-hmm. but there's no such thing as general like there was before right you know we kind of had like a okay if you made this amount then maybe you should or if yeah, you but AMT it's, and da, 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 it's, it's still similar so it's pers- still the same it's just um the the bar has been lowered so much yes. to yeah. be incorporated, much less yes. but it doesn't mean that it's automatic. And what I so. would just say is, it's worth an ask, you guys. So if you're not sure if it's right for you, and you don't have some, and you've been going to H and R Block, or you don't have a tax preparer that you've been working with and that you trust, if you've been doing your God help you, 1040 easy for the last X amount of years, oh, gosh, then yeah. I just say to you. You know, it's worth an investigation and an appointment. And I and I really want to impress upon you. This is my goal for you all. 2018 is to stop thinking just from like, here is how can I get my SAG card to how can I get my Oscar? But the all the many steps that are in between that and having a business set up for all of that. And somebody who handles your finances long term is something that you should be really considering. Great. True that. True that. Yep, yep. True that. I do. I sounded like you for a minute. <laughs> no, 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 what? Now he's trying to sound like, what? He's trying to have, trying to have a little flavor. Oh, man. <laughs> I got some flavor. Oh, what you think? If only they could see you, they would know you. What you <laughs> think, child? <laughs> <laughs> They will. It's on Instagram. Oh, that's right. right. Okay. I have just a few questions I end with. I'm not going to do all them because I want people to just have this and and sort of be done. Uh, Social media. Do you want to plug yourself? No. No. Uh, I don't really have any social media. They don't do any of that stuff. I do, but it's not like Daphne McVeigh is my tax hat, like my life hat. And then my performer name is different, but this isn't me performing. So great. You know, so there you go. There you have it. Okay. And, uh, I always give an opportunity, Daphne. Oh, don't put your leg on that, Daphne, because the mic's on that. Oh, 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 oh. oh you're in trouble. Oh. Uh, like, oh. <laughs> like my little five-year-old. Daphne, every time I have anyone in here who is of the diverse category as an actor, I always give them an opportunity to have an opinion about that. Would you like to say anything about where it is, where it's going, where you'd like to see it go? Oh, goodness. Um... You know, I, so many thoughts are yes. just like ran through my head uh-huh. right now. Yeah. Um, I think we have a long way to go. Okay. Um, I think that there is much work still to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited for the future. I I'm too. not like, um, I'm hopeful. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, 2017 was a great year for me mm. as an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm expecting each year to get better mm-hmm. and better. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm I'm hopeful for more opportunities, mm-hmm. which I don't feel that um, I'm given. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but I'll, I'll leave it on that positive note. Good. As mm. opposed to dwelling on. Good. Um, but, you know, there's room for change. Absolutely. And there's room for growth. Great. And I'm hopeful that that will happen. Okay. Very good. Thank you. I end with mildly interesting this can be anything that you've read that you know that you think about anything you want people to watch check out your favorite new recipe whatever you got if you'd like i can go first so that you are not oh favorite new uh, recipe uh, (laughs) i've got a lot of those do you i save them so this is a sad thing my husband watches me in bed like i'll like be late at night and i'll like see these recipes and i'll save them save them save them on pinterest i'm gonna make them on facebook like you know Uh how they have those like and they have those like one minute videos where they show everything and it makes it look so easy like because it's a one minute video you don't realize it's gonna take you 30 minutes to prep it right and i save them save them save them he's like when are you going to start making some? <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to start making some he of those recipes the, you saved? I just saved the chicken and that. artichoke when it was like a fork. Because, you know, I got two kids. We got, yes. I got a simple right, pot. Yeah. And then we yes. have two instant pots now. So uh, yes. I'm trying two. to make crock pots. Oh, I have two. three. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's not in. a crock pot, girl. Oh, it's an instant, instant, instant pot. pot. It's a pressure cooker. This is a whole new. It's a whole new. It's the fast version of a slow cooker. But he's like, when are we going to start? 
<laughs> so I'm about to start meal planning, which uh, is another, yeah. you know, it's a whole um, thing, whole nother thing. Yeah. But yeah, he's like, what, what are you going to do? When are you going to start doing that? <laughs> so I've got like 40 <laughs> saved in the last like two or three weeks. I'm like, that's that funny. looks good. That I'm going to look at the Instapot. That's oh, what I'm girl. Gonna do. It's, oh, girl. It's fabulous. I'm going to check it out. I have three yeah. coffee pots. Cause that's how I meal plan is I do usually on Sundays I do grocery shopping and then I do like three crock pot meals and I make two more and then I'm done. For oh, wow. Oh, that's amazing. Well, you can that's, make them a lot quicker. Well, you can make them a lot quicker. Yeah. That's well, the fine. Instant Pot allows you to if make you it need quicker. To. But if you I, need when to. I first, when my husband actually was the one that first got that yeah. Instant Pot and he got it like two years ago yeah. before the craze. Yeah. But it's like, I thought, oh, it's not going to have any flavor. If you make mm. it fast, it ain't going to be good. Mm. You know, but oh, yeah, it good. is so delicious. Ooh, I'm so excited. And I can get like, if something that I would have to have slow cooked for eight hours yeah. before, it'll be done in an hour. Oh my God. And it's like, so yeah. if I'm, I'm not the best with meal planning. Too. Which I need to do better yeah. because that goes back to the whole budgeting thing. Right. If I know what my food is for the week, I'm not, you know, impulse out and, doing takeout. I'm right. not impulse going to Whole Foods. Yeah, yeah, grabbing yeah. last minute stuff. I'm I'm making my plan around what's on sale, etc. Right. But it is like I can come home and be like, oh gosh, I didn't really think about it. Oh, but I know I can put this in the instant pot, and then like 25 minutes we'll have dinner. Yes, that's that so would have great. normally taken five hours in the crock pot. Yes. it is a beautiful thing, girl. I'm all about whoop, the instant whoop. pot. Whoop, whoop. You have one, all right? We have one, but I don't. You of course, you don't it. use it. Okay. Well, any mildly <laughs> interesting for you? Do you it's have terrible. One? It's terrible. I'm <laughs> totally sexist. Your wife got dinner waiting for you guys. <laughs> oh, whatever. I came from the south, so. Oh, okay. But you, you get fed so well, and there's like two guys in our <laughs> office. Like, oh, my cause, wife cause, loves cause to cook his, and stuff. Because it's because uh, you guys have people. They they bring in food for you and like meals. And oh stuff. yeah. Oh, goodness. I'm like, I got a good family. I'm like, what? I told my husband. They come visit me, bring me stuff. They do. I said, what? I told my husband, when are you going to start bringing me meals? <laughs> <laughs> he cooks. That's he cooks. He helps out a lot, actually. Any mildly interesting for you? Mildly interesting. Oh, man. I'm so boring right now. This tax bill has no. had me just it's like, got you all spinning. I can do is be thinking about it and yeah. trying to figure out how to respond to it. And yeah. it's been the uh, incorporation craze it has in January. Been. Yes. So. I'm, well, I'm interested to see what, I, I think this I know this podcast has been highly in demand. People really want to have some clarity, and I think we really did that. My, I hope oh, so. I think we did. Oh, I, I kind of yielded a lot to you, just because I felt like you people know. I don't think I don't think people are so worried about right now doing their 2017 taxes. Yes. Although that's the big thing. It's like telling people don't throw away your receipts for 2017. No. thinking you don't need them Ugh. because you're looking at 2018. Right. Please. But you know, I feel like for me, I just kind of was. I'm hopeful mm-hmm. that people get information that they find beneficial and they yeah. need. Yes. Um. But I was like, let me just yield because I don't know. As much. It's good that you yielded. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, but only I don't, I don't only get doing to, I don't, this podcast. It's don't, hard to don't overshadow. Don't get it twisted. It's hard to don't overshadow. It is. It is. I would never try. It's never it's did. hard. Yeah. So she has to yield yes, in order for yes, you to, in order for you to acquiesce. acquiesce. <laughs> <laughs> the spotlight. My mildly interesting yes. thing. Uh, right after a week after tax season, I'm going on a Disney cruise. Cool. I, I'm so you curious what it's going to be. Mildly interesting. Uh, it's I my, went on a Disney cruise ten years paid, ago. That's paid amazing. For it. Is They're it amazing? That's oh, you're not in-laws? mildly See, for not, it. Yeah. Oh, Because they wanted the whole family to go, so they're so. Which sweet. one are you doing? I have no idea. I just know that they were like, "It's happening." Four twenty two. <laughs> Oh, April love 22. Like I was three, like, that's perfect. Like as five as, days after yeah, or something. Five days, yeah, that's I'm amazing. Perfect. They're wow. awesome. I went on a Disney cruise 13 years ago. Yeah. And <laughs> we didn't have any kids yet. <laughs> <laughs> it was phenomenal. Uh, it was phenomenal. We went to the Bahamas. It was fun. amazing. Yeah, wow. You'll love it. The okay. kids will love it. Okay. Nonstop entertainment. Yeah. I'm super mildly interesting. For you. You're yeah. so underplayed that. Ah. I uh, think he intentionally said mildly interesting, well, so, we like, like, so we'd be like, like, so we'd be like, the tax season in that, re- yeah, in that way. I love it. I'm so You're gonna have the best it. time. <laughs> well played, Ronnie. Well played. <laughs> My mildly interesting is uh, something that, that goes along with mo- uh, meal prep. It's a uh, cauliflower foods, which is spelled. I think C A L I cauliflower. Oh. C A L I apostrophe flower foods. And it's a cauliflower pizza crust Ooh, that I've is that. like Same. cheese and cauliflower. And you, it's like they have one at Trader Joe's that doesn't taste good, just FYI. Hmm. And this one is like they've got like red pepper, or Italian, or, you know, those sorts of things. And they're so delicious. And they're 60 calories a crust, Ooh. you guys. Ooh. And you pop it in the oven for like 
10 minutes and then you like put whatever you want on it. I've made Jesse like a breakfast pizza with it. Oh, wow. You See, I put... think, you know, I mean, you should have had that ready when we showed up here. <laughs> <laughs> I had one for dinner. I, I, did I think that pizza. was very rude <laughs> <laughs> because That's I would have liked to have started out the evening with pizza. a cauliflower pizza crust. Mm-hmm. They're so good. So and you... selfish. <laughs> Now I'm gonna drop one off to her work, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're so they're so good, and it's just so easy. And I'll put like, you know, I'll get like some Indian curry or something at the grocery store, and throw some white rice and some curry and some chicken on that I've like made on Sunday. It's just so easy to nice. put anything on it. Yeah, and they're she all like she can cook. Real, oh God, boo, I can cook. Yeah, she yeah. makes it sound easy. She said, that "I just sounds... give me a little curry <laughs> and some rice." No, and some you don't chicken. even have to like, like this girl. <laughs> Now, Ronnie's face was like, oh, shoot. What? 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 No, literally, you can buy the curry in a can. <laughs> the rice can be ready made. And you can get already cooked chicken at Trader Joe's. And then you just put it together and have it for dinner. And it's just, especially any of those of you for the new year who are trying to cut down on carbs or any of that, I know for me, uh, it's less of like a calorie thing and more of like a, I get so exhausted thing when I've oh, just yeah. let, but I love pizza so much and I just love like pizza. a, like a I cheesy, like who doesn't want a cheesy bread or cheesy bread tasting thing that actually is made out of cauliflower that you can then place pizza toppings on. I'm just going to yeah. say this. Yes. I don't believe you that it's as good as you say I, We will is. ask Jesse. No, 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 no. Right now. We don't need to ask Jesse. What I'm thinking is. Yes. You make one, yes. and then we judge. Yeah, we'll okay. judge. <laughs> I'm gonna bring it to the office, and we'll we'll have a showdown, you guys. We will have a showdown, and only reason because I tasted it at like a tasting that they had, and then some they were like, "Oh, and it's sixty oh, yeah. calories," and I was like, "Wait, what?" And they were like, I was like, for this slice or? Were, were you at like, Costco? No. Where'd you get the crust? Girl, I went to a gifting suite. Oh. And they gave me some oh. What kind of gifting suite give cauliflower oh. crust? The ones I got to are so. <laughs> <cheap. laughs> <laughs> I'll call you next invite and we'll go together. <laughs> See, Walk I away with some out. makeup. Oh, my some goodness. Shoes. Oh they don't That's have much amazing. for you, Ronnie, but it's good for us. We'll get some right, champagne. Ronnie. You would only right. find it mildly interesting. Yeah, only <laughs> mildly interesting. <laughs> right. I'll appreciate you guys. That's right. Well, thank you guys so much. You, I yeah. know you both have families. I know it's traffic and it's a Friday, but I promise you everyone is going to be so grateful, already is so grateful that you're coming over and having this talk. So I so appreciate you. Thanks, Ronnie. You got it, yeah. Thanks, you guys. And remember, thank you. don't forget your towel. Next week on Audrey Helps Actors, We are going to be talking to my publicist, Melissa Berger, and she's the person who did all my publicity for Godless. We are still obviously keeping a continual professional relationship going and personal because she's great. And what we're going to be talking about is what is a publicist? Do you need one? Will you need one? Why do you care? There's a lot of people out there trying to take your money, so just know you want to be prepared for when that's actually a right choice for you, and then who will be the right choice for you. These next few weeks, I have a publicist, stylist, we're going to do lawyer, we're going to sort of get all this sort of team stuff rolled out for you guys, so enjoy. Melissa, she's hilarious. You're going to love this episode. Special thanks this week to Ronnie Stedman. That's Stedman, S-T-E-A-D-M-A-N, tax services at gmail.com. S-T-E-A-D-M-A-N, tax services at gmail.com. And Daphne McVeigh at D-A-P-H-N-E, B-L-O-O-M-E-R at yahoo.com. Daphne Bloomer at yahoo.com. If you're looking for an accountant, these two are actor tax preparers that I couldn't recommend more highly. They know their stuff. Special shout out to them. You know, you guys, they have families. They're working actors. They're tax preparers. So, so thank you guys so much for coming over here. They came over during Friday rush hour traffic, you guys from Burbank and Studio City. So thank you so much, you guys. This show is produced and edited 
by Jesse Lumen. Oh, he's so handsome. Special thanks to Thomas Snodgrass for the mic assistance here and there. He's so generous with his mic. It's good to have your sound guy across the street, you guys. And thanks to Alok Mehta for some help with the theme song. Music this week and every week by Ari De Niro. And most importantly, don't forget your towel. <laughs>